Welcome to the Compass Preparation Course, Module 1, Lecture 2, Numbers and Variables. My name is Elizabeth Blaylock. Let's get started. When starting these little mini lectures, I like to begin with a little warm-up, a brain teaser that gets us in the mood to do math. So this one is a very clever one I found in a book. Why is 6 afraid of 7? because seven, eight, nine. Now that we have warmed up and loosened up and we're happy, we are ready to start. If you're following along in Bob Miller's math prep for the Compass exam book, we're going to cover pages one and two today, only section, the sections numbers and equalities. We're adding an additional topic, variables, that is not found in the book. Let's get started. What is a number? There are eight categories of numbers that we are going to be dealing with for arithmetic, algebra, trigonometry, and geometry, all of the subjects covered in the Compass Math exam. This diagram shows you how these numbers are related to each other. It also shows you relatively the size of the sets of numbers, the largest including all of the, includes all of the numbers which are complex numbers. The smallest set, the first set, is natural numbers. These are also called counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, and so forth and so on. The next set is whole numbers, and whole numbers consist of all the natural numbers plus the number zero. So whole numbers are zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so forth and so on. All natural numbers are whole numbers, but the reverse is not true. All whole numbers are not natural numbers. This is because zero is a whole number, but it is not a natural number. Next we have integers. Integers consist of whole numbers and negative whole numbers. So you have negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, and so on and so forth in both directions. It includes all the negative numbers, all the negative whole numbers, and all the positive whole numbers. Now, negative whole numbers are not whole numbers. I know this is a little confusing, but negative whole numbers are integers. Only positive whole numbers are whole numbers. Positive numbers are those that are greater than zero, and negative numbers are those that are less than zero. So positive whole numbers, 2, 12, 100, 1 million. These are integers. They are also whole numbers. Negative whole numbers, negative 7, negative 12, negative 3 billion. These are negative whole numbers. They are also integers, not whole numbers. Zero is neither positive nor negative. The next set is rational numbers. And a rational number is simply any number that can be turned into a fraction. It includes integers. For example, we have the number 49. An in integer can be turned into a fraction by placing that number over 1. So in our example 49, 49 is really the fraction 49 over 1. But math convention allows us to omit the 1, and we simply say the number is 49. Rational numbers include terminating fractions. These are fractions that end. For example, 1 over 16 equals 0 0.0625. A very common terminating fraction that many of us are familiar with is 1 over 2, 1 half. It equals 0 0.5. Repeating fractions are also rational numbers. These numbers do not end, but they repeat some combination of numbers after the decimal point repeats. In our example, 2 over 9 is equal to 0 0.2222222222 and so on and so forth. The number 2 repeats, so 2 over 9 is a rational number because it is a repeating fraction. In other words, rational numbers are ratio numbers. They can be expressed as ratios or fractions. Irrational numbers are the opposite of rational numbers. These are numbers that cannot be expressed as fractions. 
two very important irrational numbers that we will see a lot of in coming modules are pi and e. Pi equals approximately 3.14, but it never ends. It has many numbers after it, but we usually round that to 3.14. E is 2.7. Again, it goes on and on and on, but we round it off to 2.7. Here's a hint when you're looking for irrational numbers. Most numbers under root signs or radicals are irrational. For example, the square root of 2 is equal to 1.4142, so forth and so on. It never ends. The next set is real numbers. Real numbers are simply rational numbers and irrational numbers, the combination of both. So every real number must either be a rational number or irrational number. Imaginary numbers are the opposite of real numbers. They are non-real numbers. These numbers are equal to a negative number when squared. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about imaginary numbers in upcoming modules. Here's a hint to help find imaginary numbers now. Most of them include i, which is equal to the square root of negative 1. For example, the square root of negative 4 equals 2i. And don't worry, if you don't understand, or that sounds a little confusing right now, we have an entire module on imaginary numbers. The last category of numbers are complex numbers. This includes real numbers and imaginary numbers. It is the largest set of numbers. You can review the diagram presented earlier on and you will see how these numbers are related to each other. Now, let's do a little on-the-spot review. Is a whole number a rational number? Yes, it is. And remember, a whole number is also an integer. It's also a real number. And it's also a complex number. All right, let's move on. What kind of number is 8.09090909, so forth and so on? That bar above the two numbers means that those numbers continue in that same pattern. It's a rational number because it equals 89 over 11. Remember, any number that can be expressed as a fraction is a rational number. Next, what about negative 81.5i plus 1 over 8? It's complex because complex numbers have two parts, a rational part and an irrational part. In this problem, the rational part is 1 over 8. The irrational part is negative 81.5i. Next. the square root of 7 over 3 is irrational. Now 7 over 3 is rational because it is a fraction. But remember that hint about irrational numbers? Many of them under radicals are irrational. What about 0? What kind of number is 0? It's a whole number. 0 is also an integer, a rational number, a real number and a complex number. The number line shows us positions of numbers. Usually the number line is presented only with integers, but it includes all numbers except for imaginary numbers, which kind of have their own number line which intersects the regular number line at zero. That's just a little information for you. The number line helps us express equalities, inequalities, as well as magnitudes. We do this using signs. The equal sign, the does not equal sign, greater than, and less than. For some, greater than and less than presents a little challenge, but if you remember this little tool, it will help you to determine 
which sign to use. The alligator always eats the biggest number. Okay? So, if we have an example, 6 and 8, and we want to use a sign to show how these numbers are related. Remember, the alligator eats the biggest one. The biggest number is 8, so that's the number the alligator is going to eat. The sign is less than, so 6 is less than 8. We also have greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. The next section is variables. Variables are simply letters or symbols that represent numbers. They can represent one or more numbers. For example, x equals 3. Delta equals negative 7 and positive 7. B equals negative 2, 0, and 11 over 4. Two numbers, pi and e, are not variables because they do not vary. Pi is always equal to 3.14. E is always equal to 2.7. The most common variable you will see is x. Let's do it on the spot right now. Let's consider the variable c. And c, let's assign it a value of 8. So c equals 8. What is the correct sign for each expression below? Less than or equal to. Because c equals 8. And the numbers to the right are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so forth and so on. C is less than or equal to. Next, 1 over 8 and C over 1. What this is, is a reciprocal. When you have a fraction and you switch the numerator and the denominator. In this case, you could use a does not equal sign or a less than because c over 1 is equal to 8 over 1, which is 8. Next, negative 8 and negative c. They're equal to each other. What about c plus c and 15? c is equal to 8, so c plus c equals 8 plus 8, which is 16. That means the sign is greater than. How about 3c minus 1? c is equal to 8, and in this case when we write a number and a variable right beside each other, the implied operation is multiplication. So 3 times c equals 3 times 8. That's 24 minus 1, that equals 23. So the sign is less than. If you are following along in Bob Miller's math prep for the compass exam, complete exercise 1 on page 11. If you are enrolled in the compass preparation course, the submissions for this module are assignment 1.2 numbers and variables and assignment 1.3 personal math journey exercise number 1. You can email your work to compass at stemrocks.com. You can fax it to 770-676-6419. Or you can send it through postal mail at P.O. Box 323, Edgeville, South Carolina, 29824. Remember, if you are using postal mail and you would like your response through postal mail, include one. $1 for postage, supplies, and printing. Next time, operations on numbers. See you then.